Hello viewers, it's SuperGT here, back with some more ORL Porsche Super Cup action. So here we are at Spa for rounds number 11 and 12. Qualify 14th on the grid for Lobby A, so just making the cut here with 15 people in the lobby. Now we have a couple more people joining the league, so we have the GFR boys joining. That's uh, Nee going through. Uh, he lives in Australia, so he has quite a lot of lag. So expect to see plenty of that. You can see he's already already 25,000 feet ahead before the race has actually even started. Well, we're going to go here on 6:45. There we go. The um, the racing actually had a bit of trouble getting all sorted to begin with. Uh, so a couple of guys going or not knowing when to go exactly. But we got away fairly all right. I got a, a bit punted there through the first turn, and then just rejoining ahead of TX3 Senna. Perhaps he punted me there because I am using what looks like a TX3 livery. So I'm a bit of an imposter at the moment. So through Eau Rouge, this car can just about do it. Flat out, someone in the tire wall there. I think that was Slaps Vela. So GFR, one of the GFR guys in the wall. I think he qualified near the front as well, so not good news for him. Uh, so up in the lead, we have a GTR guy, uh, Nee. Very quick indeed. So the lap times we're looking for are, well, a 19 is very good. A low 20 is decent. So we're looking to get into the 19s if possible. So at the moment, where are we? We are in 11th. And as you can see, uh, as we scan ahead there, it's going to be very close racing from here to the end and in the other race, in the second race. So two races in this video. So coming out of the corner with no name and then moving ahead to the run-up to Blanchemont, still in 11th place here, just behind uh, Ted, GFR Ted. So into Blanchemont, you can just dip two wheels over the white line and it's still clean, hitting the apex nicely. Ted a little wide, that's going to give him a poor run into the final chicane. Didn't decide to go up the inside, but then he kind of hemmed himself in there. That gave me the run up into the second apex, and I just keep him out onto the AstroTurf. He loses enough momentum so that I go through into the top 10 so he's got the TX3 train on him right now as we go into turn one I was a bit late into their most laps actually couldn't quite get that one consistently done and then rolling into the left of Puon let the car just roll in hit the apex then you can power out for this whole second apex you can just power all the way out to get maximum drive so you can still see here very close racing uh, eight laps in total we have, it says nine, but like last week, we have one lap at the beginning to form up onto the grid. So Espion just ahead of me there, going a little bit wide. I'm just going to go around the outside, just get the drive and get ahead for this tricky right-hander. This one is very uh, difficult as well, especially with the s a small amount of gravel on the exit. really do have to get that one perfect to get a decent run up this straight. Um, you're going to be turning left at Blanchibon just here. This corner is flat out as well. Can be done fairly easily flat out. Not always easily to uh, keep within the lines though. So that is the main challenge around there. Into the final chicane. My braking here wasn't that consistent either. And then uh, getting a little bit of oversteer before the second apex. So losing a bit more time there. So Muffin just ahead. Uh, and Espion just behind. We've broken into the top nine. Not too bad given that I was... 14th at the very start of the race so actually at the end of the straight um, just behind Espion now so he actually managed to get past me coming down um, the Kemmel straight there and then he gets a little, a little bit sideways uh, through the chicane and then little wide he's just going to touch the gravel that does slow you down if you do that covers the inside line and then I'm going to go around the outside so side by side once again with Espion and just about managed to get it done so I've got the inside uh, line now for the left but then as we go through, we have a bit of a coming together. Now that was a really strange one to me. So we go down into 13th or 14th respectively. But it looked really strange that contact. I don't think there was anyone really at fault. We were just trying to race closely and it just didn't work really. So then that is Senna going a little bit wide. So I go through back into 12th. So with this racing, you always have a chance, I guess, of trying to come back to get a couple more positions with people so close. It's always, uh, there's always a chance that there might be an incident or some sort of crash. So that's Ted. He had a horrible run through Eau Rouge. And then I'm going to look up the inside. 
at the end of the straight. Not quite brave enough to go up the inside. So just having to back out. Get a bit of oversteer mid-turn. So then definitely having to back out through the right-hander. And take plenty of curb on the exit. Obviously just don't run too much onto the gravel. And you're okay. Breaking on the end of the curb into this right-hander. Plenty of adverse camber here. So you have to be very patient. And then just wait to get on the throttle. You don't want to go too wide. Because you want to go to the right-hand side to get a good run through this left-hander. You can run just to the edge of the yellow and orange curb there and it will stay clean. Then just rolling into Blon into Puon, uh, just looking out for the tyre marks on the curb, on the entry, and then you can just roll the car in, then hang in the speed there through there nicely. So we have half a lap left to go. Can we get this position off of Ted uh, getting 11th? It won't matter too much because the next race is a reverse grid, remember? So... The further up I finish here, the further back I'll start in the second race. So coming into this fearsome right-hander, very tricky one to get right. I go in a little bit too early, dip two wheels on the grass, get a little bit sideways, just catch the gravel. Now that is going to put me on the back foot now, unfortunately, as we run up to Blanchemont and the final chicane. So that is the TX3 train um, that has latched onto the back of me as we come up into Blanchemont. Uh, hooking up nicely there, not too bad. And then coming up to the chicane, I don't really want to have to defend, so I'm not going to. And to be fair, Serna does pull off a very nice move. And then uh, that is Slaps, who crashed off on lap one, just almost getting past me. But then I come through to finish 13th. So overall, a bit of a mixed race, really. I started 14th, finished 13th, so I did gain but I uh, could have done better definitely as I was ninth at one point there. So those are the final results. Uh, those results will be reversed now for the grid. So I'm going to be starting third. Now I'm not sure that there have been many races where the grid has been formed from the front to the back like this, but that's how it went. A couple of guys got damage on the roll-up lap, so they had to go into the pit, then reverse. So eventually it got sorted, uh, apart from Nee, who has his Australian lag, and then... The race got underway on 4.50 and there we go. I didn't get the best of starts actually. So that is Ted getting a very good run on me. Actually, he does actually get past. But then as we go through the first turn, he kind of gets pushed a little bit wide by Muffin there. That helps me back into third. So just up ahead we have Espion who um, I made contact with in the first race. He was on pole, so he's in the lead now. And Slaps, uh, Slaps Vela in second. He was actually very uh, highly he qualified very highly so he should uh, theoretically win this race he does have the pace to do so but Espion is no doubt going to give him a good battle so let's see what we can do here we've got a decent margin now already over uh, Muffin and Ted behind so now we can kind of focus just on going forward there's no uh, not much point when you've got a gap let's say 200 feet that is more than overtaking range as in they can't overtake from that far back. So there's not much point in thinking about them. You might as well just focus on hitting your lines, hitting your breaking points, etc, etc. Except I'm not that good, so sometimes I don't do that. So then it turned into a safety car period. We did have a massive crash caught off camera from my perspective. So we did have to slow down. And this is live footage of me waiting for the formation lap to end. Or waiting for this safety car period to end as we had to wait for a couple of guys to catch up. But then eventually we did uh, restart the race at the end of lap two, going on to three. So as we go over the line, the race has restarted. And there we go. So actually, an amazing lap time there, 4 minutes 24, which is about twice as slow as it should be. So it kind of shows you just how long that formation, or that safety car period was. So Mr. Jack behind, actually not getting the best of restarts. And we're actually on the front foot here just behind Slaps Vela so he's actually lost out as you can see already Espion up in the lead getting a decent margin so he's got a bit of bit of breathing space here as we go up the Kemmel straight now this perhaps shows the difference in tunes um, I guess or I got a, a better run perhaps through Eau Rouge and then into the end of the straight uh, the chicane here um, not getting enough of a run, although Slaps Vela does go a little bit wide there. That is the danger of that curb. If you just graze two wheels on the inside AstroTurf, it can spin you around if you're not careful on the throttle. So then that has brought uh, Mr. Jack back into the battle here. So that's not what I wanted to see. 
I'd ideally like to have kept him at bay for a little bit longer. But now we have a task on our hands trying to keep him behind. So you can see on the map there, the racing is very close and I really do enjoy this Porsche League. This car is mostly very easy to handle. It handles, it just kind of grips really, it doesn't really oversteer too much unless you start uh, touching too many curves. But then into the final chicane, so you can see here at the end of lap number four, the order hasn't changed too much but it has a kind of constantine up a little bit. So Espion now has been caught by uh, Slaps and then I'm kind of on the back of Slaps. Mr. Jack on the back of me, but then looking on the map actually, there's a massive gap between 4th and 5th. So uh, we don't really have to worry too much about 5th um, place catching up at any time soon. So this really, from this point here onwards, this really ought to be 4th place at worst. Now that slaps going through into the lead in front of Espion. So we, uh, we made contact with Espion actually in the previous race. So we tried not to repeat that. That's Davin actually. Uh, retiring there, I think he had an incident at Eau Rouge and unfortunately for him he uh, got some damage so he did actually do very well in the first race I think he was on the podium so uh, he did definitely have the pace to do very well in this round. Espion getting a little bit wide on the exit there, I'm going to have a look up the inside into Puan we make side by side contact and just edge him out wide and then coming through into the next chicane we're still side by side so it seems that we are glued to uh, glued to each other for these two races and still side by side for this one I eventually have the inside for the left and I just get through into second is Mr Jack going to capitalize on that as well yes he is as we head into the right hander so Espion just losing out there but the margins are so so fine in this level of racing as it is in real motorsport as well uh, you lose an inch and then the, uh, the opposition will take a mile. So Espion there just losing out two positions. But now Mr. Jack is going to have a go. I'm just going to come across <laughs> almost. I was so scared I was going to get spun out there. Luckily, just about managed to get ahead to take the proper racing line through uh, through Blanchemont. Into the final chicane then. Going into the apex quite early because I think I braked a little bit late. Down to the first gear to get a better launch out of the final turn. So it looks like Slaps there is going to get away and it's going to be very tricky to catch up with him because I wasn't really on pace. I did manage a 19.9 in the race, but um, that was about as best, about the best lap I could do. Many others were doing low 19s, so I had a bit of a way to go to get onto their pace. So then we're going to move to uh, towards the end of lap number six. Actually, Slaps hasn't got too far away, but it probably is a uh, probably is too big of a gap to catch up. And then running a little bit wide there, you can see I just grazed the gravel on the exit. This is going to give Mr. Jack the run up the hill towards Blanchemont. And I don't really want to fight on the inside here. So I'm just going to back out, give him that position. I could have gone through there side by side, but we're risking a lot here. So then through Eau Rouge, I go a little bit... Well, I, what the hell was that? I don't even know. It was a bit of a shoddy line, let's say. So that is Espion. He's going to get the run and go back past into third. Um... But we are going to try to wrestle that back. We've got about a lap and three quarters left to try and get that position back. It'll be good to get a podium in this final race. So let's see what we can do. I think we're evenly matched on pace as well, myself and Espion. To be fair, we were with each other for most of the races. So let's see what we can do here. Into the corner of no name. Well, that's going to happen, isn't it? I'm going to get damage from the tiniest of hits. It really wasn't a big hit at all. But as Espion actually suggested in the lobby, we probably have some sort of issue with our connections between each other so uh, that's a possible cause of those two incidents but there you go so now I've got a challenge on my hands trying to keep the rape train at bay um, well you know you can see on the map I've got about let's say three or four seconds of a gap between myself and the incoming train so we have to make our lead last this is Jacob just coming through I wasn't quite able to keep him at bay so we still have a lap to go Mosh is going through, but then going wide, and then I'm going to get that position back, back into sixth place. Will I be able to finish in my favourite position? Let's see. It's going to be a tall order because this damage was absolutely awful. My car was braking and going to the left, and then just not turning left at all. So you can see they're just running wide, coming back in front of Muffin, which must, well, his heart must be sinking right now. He's got um, a hard enough job as it is trying to keep these guys at bay. And then just to add to his problems, 
I come onto the track just ahead of him, but then here I go wide, I'm just going to bail out, let them all go. So I'm just going to cause an accident if I stay there for too long. And then at the end of the race, just to rub it in, AMS Mac just comes through. So I'm going to finish last in this race. So unfortunately, a race where I could have won, but easily finished on the podium, I actually finished last. So an unfortunate end to what was a promising round, could have finished a lot better. But oh well, that is motor racing and sometimes it goes that way. So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new and an all-round banterous good lad. If you're not, then don't bother. And hit the like button if you're a cheeky little banterous lad as well. So yeah, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.